how can we change one data type to another data type which is known as data transformation and we are going to look at what are the different scales of measurement which we use for expressing data. In our previous session we have looked at the different types of data, quantitative, qualitative and within them what are the different types. Now today we are going to look at how data from one particular type can be transformed into another. Now you may ask me what is the need to change or transform the data from one type to another. For purposes of analysis sometimes we need to transform the data of one type to another. Now what do I mean by this? Let's take an example. When we try to conduct a survey on suppose 100 people in a community, we would like to capture their age in years as it is. What I mean is when you record the age of each individual person in your study, you would take it as the age completed by that time when you are doing your study. So you would get 100 different values for the age in years for your study. Now, you may want to condense this data or reduce this data for ease of analysis by categorizing this individual age values where in which case age is a continuous variable because you have got the values as continuous variables. We try to reduce this continuous variable age into a categorical variable wherein we make categories of for example we can make categories as people in their early 20s 30s, 40s, 50s and so on. So all those people whom you consider to be coming in that particular interval of early 20s that is those who are less than 20 years would all be categorized into the 20s group. So what you are trying to do now is you are converting a continuous variable captured as it is in the form of values as age in years to a categorical variable that is making it as 20s, 30s or so on. Some people may also want to classify it on the basis of intervals. What I mean is that you can take people who are in the age group of 0 to 10 years, 10 to 20 years, 20 to 30 years and so on. Wherein if you look at the last uh, digit of your range that is 0 to 10 overlaps with the first of the next category. So 0 to 10, 10 to 20 which means that all who are less than 10 years of age would be included in the 0 to 10 year category. Those who are 10 years and above but less than 20 years would go in the next category and so on. We need to be very careful when we make such categories so that we do not include one value in two categories. So that's what I mean by transformation of age as a continuous variable into a categorical data that is making it as either 20s, 30s or making specific age groups in which each individual age group would then fit into. Now, there is another way of categorizing people. So what, I'm, what I mean is, now we converted a continuous variable into a categorical variable. But in that category, we have included, we have made it like an ordinal variable wherein we have made intervals and we can put them in an order. Another thing which we can do is, some researchers tend to do is uh, classify people uh, based on their age into categories like young, middle age, old age and so on. Now when you make these kind of categories, we turn a continuous variable of age into what we call as a nominal variable. If you just have two categories like young and old, we can call it as a dichotomous variable. Whereas if you have like young, middle-aged, old, elderly, you can consider it as a nominal variable. Now my main issue of discussion today is if you have captured the data as age in years, individual values for all the study subjects, you can reduce your data by either converting that continuous variable into a categorical variable like making it as intervals of uh, different age groups or classifying them as early 20s, early 30s and further down you can reduce it by making it a nominal variable by classifying it as young, old and so on. 
Now the question is, what if a researcher captures people's ages in the form of young and old? What I mean is, if you design a questionnaire or a survey form, if you try to capture people's age based on their appearance, for example, if you just put as the person appears to be young or old, and you capture it as young, and you enter all these data, young, old, and so on, for 100 study subjects, please bear in mind that you cannot transform this nominal data into a continuous data. What I mean by that is, you can make a continuous variable and change it into a nominal one but it is not true vice versa if you try to do that your data is erroneous and your analysis will be inappropriate so points to remember are we can change a categorical variable into a nominal variable we can change a continuous variable into a categorical variable but not vice versa so these are some useful tips which we need to follow when we are talking about data transformation. So that's all about data transformation. Now let's move on to scales of measurement. When we talk about types of data, I have mentioned earlier that we have the two main types, quantitative and qualitative, within which we have continuous and discrete data type under quantitative and categorical, that is nominal and ordinal under the qualitative data type. Now, sometimes when we make clinical measurements, we need to express our clinical impressions very clearly and explicitly based on the unit of measurement which we use. Now, what do I mean by this? We need to use something which is known as scales of measurement, which are accurate and sophisticated ways of expressing data. Now, when I'm mentioning about the scales of measurement, you will find that there is a certain degree of repetition of what I have put earlier as types of data. So what's the repetition? In categorical uh, kind of qualitative data what we have seen, we said that we have the nominal and we have the ordinal categories, right? Now these categories are also considered uh, or when we consider the scales of measurement. So there are four scales of measurement of which the first two which I am going to discuss and which we have already talked about in detail earlier are the nominal and the ordinal. Just to revise, nominal are those, nominal is the scale wherein we just divide those our study subjects into groups depending on their characteristics. So I have given examples like sex, occupation. Uh, race, religion as examples of nominal type of data. When we capture this data, when we collect information about this particular variable, we collect it as in the form of, so if it is sex, we will collect it as male, female. If it is occupation, you would want to put it in different categories like professional or non-professional or uh, researchers or academicians, non-academicians, depending on the type of study you want to do. So these categories are not based on any order, they are made on the characteristic on which it is based. So that's nominal. When we talk of ordinal, we did say that we need to put the variable in categories. So and these categories, as I said earlier, there is no particular order to it. You can have any order. So for example, if you are, you are asking about perception about a movie, whether how do you how do you feel the movie is and people answer it in the form of good and bad suppose those are the two options you give now if you put good before bad or bad before good it doesn't really make any difference right so what i mean is the order of presenting that particular data is not going to make a difference people's rating about a particular course whether it is poor good very good excellent doesn't really make a difference if you put it starting from poor or starting from excellent. So the order in which the data is displayed doesn't really make any difference in interpretation. That's the meaning of ordinal. So we have seen two scales of measurement. Now we move on to the remaining two scales of measurement and these are closely linked to our ordinal scale of measurement. So let's come to that. Now this is a very important concept which we need to realize when we are making comparisons or taking ratios. So the next scale of measurement which I want to highlight is the interval scale. Now what do we understand by an interval scale of measurement? 
In an interval scale of measurement, we need to be very careful that the intervals which are made, the categories which are made are equal. And if we take a difference in two values of the category, the magnitude of the difference should be the same. The best example of an interval scale of measurement is measurement of temperature either in Celsius or Fahrenheit. What I mean by that is, suppose you are measuring temperature and you give intervals like from, for example, 10 to 30 degrees centigrade and 30 to 40 degrees centigrade and so on. Now the intervals which you make generally are required to be equal in size. And if you take difference between the intervals, the magnitude should be same. What I mean by that is, if you take the difference between 90 degree centigrade and 80 degree centigrade, it is 10 degrees. Similarly, if you take the difference between 30 degree centigrade and 20 degree centigrade, it is 10 degrees. So what I mean is, the magnitude of the difference between the two values of the interval have to be the same. And that's the difference between interval and ordinal kind of scale of measurement. In the interval scale, please do remember that the difference has to be the same in two values of the interval. Alright? Now we move on to the last scale of measurement and that is a ratio scale. Now people get quite confused when we, we talk about ratio scales. If we have to talk about a ratio scale with reference to an interval scale, please do remember that measurements which are done on an interval scale do not have a true zero. Whereas measurements which are done on a ratio scale, they have a true zero. What do I mean by all this? When you measure temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit, you do not have a value like 0 degree centigrade, which means there is no temperature. That doesn't exist. However, if you measure temperature in Kelvin, another scale of measuring temperature, which is used mostly by researchers, you have an absolute zero there. So what you can do by this is, you can compare two values in temperature mentioned in kelvins if you are measuring the temperature in kelvin but you cannot compare values when you measure temperature in degree centigrade or degree fahrenheit okay you can look at the difference in the magnitude in the interval scale of measurement but in a ratio scale you can compare the values you can uh, consider one value over the other other examples of a ratio scale are length you can have something of no length, there is no length, right? Or weight, weight also sometimes can be zero, right? So this becomes an example of a ratio scale. So since weight is measured on a ratio scale, you can always have a ratio of weight. So you can have a ratio of weight of females with weight of males because weight is measured on a ratio scale. So to summarize, what have we seen today? The key points to remember from today's session are when you try to change one data form from, from one data type to other, you need to remember that you are not reducing the data just for the purpose of reducing it. It has to be done with a purpose. You cannot do a transformation of a nominal data into a continuous variable. You can transform continuous variables to nominal types but not vice versa and when we when we consider scales of measurement there are four main scales of measurement nominal ordinal interval and ratio which with examples are seen in this table so thank you very much for your time please keep watching and do subscribe see ya bye bye